Okay, so it's time for us to go over set two, problems number one through five. So that's what we're gonna cover today in this video. It says, the lead of a screw is the distance that the screw advances in a straight line when the screw is turned one complete turn. If a screw is two and a half inches long and has a lead of one eighth inch, how many complete turns would get it all the way into a piece of wood? Okay, so we have a screw. I'm gonna make a little screw. And we know that that screw is two and a half inches long. And then they said there's a lead of one eighth inch. So I'm gonna say lead of one eighth inch. And then it says, how many complete turns would get it all the way into a piece of wood? So after every one turn, you get one eighth inch. You wanna figure out how many turns can be in two and a half inches. So we're gonna to have to divide. So we're gonna to have to do two and a half divided by one eighth and to see what that's equal to. So the first step is to change this from a mixed number into an improper fraction. The way we do that is you multiply two times two, which is four, and then you add the top number one, so it's five, and then you keep the denominator the same, which is two. So two and one half is the same as saying five halves divided by one eighth. Okay, now that they're both singular fractions, we can go ahead and divide them. So the rule when dividing is that you keep the first fraction the same, you change the division to a multiplication, and then you flip the one over eight. So we're gonna keep five over two as is, we're gonna change the division to multiplication, and we're gonna flip the 1 eighth to eight over one, and we're gonna go ahead and multiply that out. So five times eight over two times one. Five times eight is 40, two times one is two. 40 over two is the same as saying 40 divided by two, which is equal to 20. So it would take 20 turns in order to get this screw all the way into the wall. All right, so if you're new to this, just take this as a note, Keep, change, flip. Keep the first fraction, change the division into multiplication, and flip and find the reciprocal, and then you can go ahead and multiply them out. All right, let's go ahead and go to the second question. So the second question says, if x, y is equal to 144, and x plus y is equal to 30, and x is greater than y, what is the value of x minus y? So let's first figure out what x and y could be. So x times y is equal to 144. So we need to find factors of 144 that when you multiply, they equal 144, but when you add them together, they equal 30. So let's go ahead and look at some of the factors of 144. So you can do one, you could do one times 144. You could do two times 72. You could do three times 48, you could do four times 36, and you could do six times 24. All right, so you can continue because there's also 12 times 12, etc., etc. But we're gonna see, okay, which one of these numbers, these all multiply to equal 144, but they also have to add to equal 30. So when you add one plus 144, that's not 30. Um, 72 plus 2, that's not equal to 30. 48 plus 3 is not equal to 30. 36 plus 4 is not equal to 30. 6 plus 24, 6 plus 24, that is equal to 30. So we found what x and y could be. Remember, x times y has to equal 144. 6 times 24 does equal 144, so we have that checked out. And then x plus y should equal 30. So 6 plus 24, oops, sorry, 6 plus 24 should equal 30, which is also correct. So now it's saying x is greater than y. And the reason why this is important is because we have to figure out what x is going to be and what y is going to be. Although we know the two options are 6 and 24, we have to strategically place either the 6 as the x or the six as the y, and same thing with the 24. So, because we know that x is greater than y, the x must be the 24, and the y must be the six. 
Okay, so we also take, took care of that. So now we have to go ahead and subtract x minus y. So x minus y, x is 24, 24 minus six. And if you guessed 18, then that's the proper answer. So this problem took a few steps, but none of the steps were too hard. Two numbers multiply to get 44, but they add to get 30. So find the factors of 144, see which of those factors add to get 30. Then you have to make sure that whatever two numbers you choose, the X is greater than the Y because that's what this told us. And then once we can figure out what X is equal to and what Y is equal to, we can go ahead and plug it into that last equation and we were able to figure out that the answer is going to be 18. All right, so let's go ahead and go to question number three. So question number three says, which of the following is the sign of angle A in the right triangle below? So this is a right triangle because there's a 90 degree angle. It's good to just know that information even though this question is not asking that, but just so you know, right triangles have a right angle. And then it says, um, which of the following is the sign of angle A? So the sign of angle A, you should go ahead and write this down. To find the sign of angle A, you have to find the leg of the opposite angle that they're asking us of. So the leg of the opposite of angle A over the hypotenuse. And that would be equal to the sine of angle A. So angle A is right here. That's the A. So the leg of the opposite of angle A. So just so you're familiar, these lines, this line, this line, and this line, these are all legs of the triangle. So the leg that's opposite of angle A would be this leg. So that is equal to 12 kilometers over the hypotenuse. So remember, the hypotenuse is opposite of the right angle, so it would be over 13. So the sine of angle A would be 12 over 13, and the answer would be C. So the only way that you can answer this type of problem is if you knew this right here, that sine of equal sine of angle A is the leg of the opposite of that angle over the hypotenuse. So you have to write this down and you have to study it and you have to memorize this because again, you may not be given this on your test. They're just assuming that you've brought this knowledge with you, that you remember that how to, how to find the sine of an angle. And then you'll know, okay, this is the leg of the opposite angle, but then also they're hoping that you remember what the hypotenuse is. And again, the hypotenuse is just the leg that's across from the 90 degree angle. So this is the 90 degree angle. So the hypotenuse is the leg across from it. So right here would be the hypotenuse. So whatever measure this would be, that would be the measure that goes on the bottom of that fraction. All right, guys, I hope that this doesn't feel too complicated for you. I hope that you don't give up because this is supposed to be a relaxed setting where we're just practicing for the ACT. So just don't feel too much pressure. Don't feel like you have to know everything. That's why I'm going over each of these questions with you one by one. And then what we're gonna do is in the future, I'll make more videos so that we can practice the concepts that we're learning. All right, so we have two more problems. Let's go ahead and stick with it. All right, it says Ding's Diner advertises daily lunch special. Choose one item from each column, only $4.95. Thus, each daily lunch special consists of a salad, a soup, a sandwich, and a drink. How many different daily lunch specials are possible? So, what, this is a very simple question. So, if they're just asking how many different combinations are possible, all you have to do is say, okay, you pick a salad, a soup, a sandwich, and a drink. Okay, so how many salad choices are there? So you can have coleslaw, lettuce, or potato. So there's three salad choices. Then there's two choices of soup. So then you would multiply that by two. Okay, and then sandwiches, there's meatloaf, chicken, hamburger, ham, tenderloin. So one, two, three, four, five. So you would multiply that by five. And then the drink choices is one, two, three, four. So there's four drink choices. So to find the possible combinations, 
you would do three times two, which is six, six times five, which is 30, and then 30 times four, which is equal to 120. So our answer is going to be I. So anytime they're asking you to figure out how many combinations of things, all you have to do is multiply how many choices are in each column. The salads times the soups times the sandwiches times the drinks, and you're able to get your answer. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to question number five. It says the volume of the right circular cone with radius, radius r and height h shown below can be found using the formula v is equal to one third pi r squared height. A cone shaped paper cup has a volume of 142 and the height of 8.5. So volume is 142, so one third pi. And so it says the radius, we don't know what the radius is, and the height is 8.5. So they want us to go ahead and solve for the radius. So I'm going to go ahead and get my calculator because I'm not going to be above using a calculator, and you are allowed to use your calculator on the ACT. Okay, so what we have to do is we're going to just remember that whenever they're squished together, that means they're being multiplied. So we can multiply one-thirds times 3.14 times 8.5. So let's go ahead and do that. So one divided by three times 3.14 times 8.5. That is equal to 8.8966667. And then we're gonna leave R squared so we're going to go ahead and divide. I'm just going to divide by 8.9 rounded. So I would do 142 divided by 8.9. And that is equal to 15.9 is equal to R squared. In order to get rid of the R squared, we can do the square root. And that cancels the both things out. So you're just left with R. But if you do the square root of one side, you have to do the square root of both sides. So we're gonna do the square root of 15.9. Now, that's a little bit difficult to do the square root of 15.9, especially if you don't come in with a calculator that's able to do the square roots. But if you look at 15.9, that's if you um, round that up, it can be rounded to 16. And the square root of 16 is equal to four. Remember, it says, what is the radius to the nearest centimeter? Anytime you see the word nearest, that means that they want you to round anyway. So we can go ahead and round that 15.9 to the square root of 16. The square root of 16 is just 4, so the radius is going to be equal to 4. So my answer is 4. So again, if you get a problem like this on your test, then just go ahead and multiply whatever it is that you can multiply out. After you are able to multiply it out, you want to get the R by itself, so we get rid of by dividing from both sides. And then we found the square root, square root. We estimated because it's just easier that way. And remember when we're test taking, it's all about doing whatever is easiest. So we found the square root of 16 and then that was equal to four. And that's how we got that answer. All right, well done you guys. This wasn't an easy um, five questions, but you guys stuck with it. So I'm very proud of you. So what I want you guys to do from here is you guys can go online to act.org. You guys can practice these, these questions, see how you do on your own, see if you remember what we did together. And if you have any questions, just type them in the comments below, and then I'll be able to skim through them and see what you guys need further help on. But just be prepared that in the future, I'm going to be posting more ACT video videos. And then I'm also going to be able to make some practice tests so that we can practice what it is that we're learning. All right, well done, you guys. I hope you have a good rest of your day. See you in the next one.